Welcome back, and this is the last session for the MGT4520 series in global entrepreneurship. And today we are going to talk about managing an international entrepreneurship business strategy. I hope you enjoy. The objectives today are to analyze the various organizational structures that best meet the needs of the enterprise in different cultures. We're also hoping to understand the need for performance, evaluation, and benchmarking as solid techniques for controlling a global venture. This will include understanding global organization structures and the benefits and drawbacks of each structure, as well as learning how to control the global venture by using the best needed measurements and evaluation techniques appropriate for the country. Global strategic planning involves the formulation and implementation of strategies to achieve organizational objectives across international markets. It encompasses the development of core global strategies, the design of global programs, and the execution and control of global initiatives. Let's dive a little bit deeper into these three topics. The first being developing the core global strategy. Now the core global strategy outlines the overarching approach for achieving the organization's objectives on a global scale. This involves conducting a comprehensive analysis of external factors such as market trends, competitive landscape, regulatory environment, and cultural considerations. Key elements of developing the core global strategy include defining the organization's global vision, mission, and values, as well as identifying strategic priorities, target markets, and competitive positioning. Strategies may include market entry approaches, such as exporting, licensing, joint ventures, or acquisitions, product service offerings, pricing strategies, branding and marketing strategies, and distribution channels. The core global strategy serves as a guiding framework for all global activities and initiatives and ensures alignment with the organization's overall goals and objectives. The second component, developing the global program. Now the global program translates the core global strategy into actionable initiatives and projects to be implemented across international markets. This involves developing detailed plans, timelines, budgets, and resource allocations for each aspect of the global strategy. Global programs may include market development programs, product launch campaigns, international expansion initiatives, supply chain optimization projects, and talent development programs. Collaboration and coordination among various functional areas, such as marketing, sales, operations, and finance, and across different regions are essential to ensure the successful execution of global programs. Flexibility and adaptability are key considerations in developing global programs to accommodate diverse market dynamics, regulatory requirements, and cultural nuances across regions. Now the third component, implementing and controlling the global effort, involves executing the global programs, monitoring progress, and making adjustments as needed to ensure alignment with strategic objectives. This requires effective leadership, communication, and coordination among global teams and stakeholders. Implementation involves deploying resources, managing timelines, resolving issues, and overcoming barriers to progress. Controlling the global effort involves establishing performance metrics, key performance indicators, also known as KPIs, and milestones to track progress and measure success. Regular monitoring, evaluation, and feedback mechanisms are implemented to assess performance, identify areas of improvement, and make strategic adjustments as necessary. Controlling the global effort also involves managing risks, addressing challenges, and capitalizing on opportunities that arise during the implementation process. Global strategic planning involves a systematic approach to developing, implementing, and controlling strategies to achieve organizational objectives on a global scale. By developing a core global strategy, designing global programs, and effectively implementing and controlling global efforts, organizations can navigate the complexities of international markets and drive sustainable growth and success. Developing the core global strategy is a foundational step 
in international business expansion as it sets the direction and framework for pursuing global opportunities effectively. Let's discuss each of these aspects on the slide in detail. Clear definition of the business model with purpose. The first step in developing a core global strategy is to define the business model with a clear purpose and vision. This involves articulating the organization's mission, values, and long-term objectives in the context of global expansion. It's essential to define the value proposition, competitive advantage, and strategic intent that differentiate the organization in the global marketplace. A well-defined business model provides clarity and direction for decision-making and resource allocation across international markets. The second aspect is assess the global market characteristics and economies. Conducting a thorough assessment of global market characteristics and economies is crucial for identifying opportunities and challenges. This includes analyzing factors such as market size, growth trends, demographics, socioeconomic conditions, political stability, and regulatory environments across target markets. Understanding variations in consumer behavior, purchasing power, cultural preferences, and trade barriers helps inform market entry strategies and resource allocation decisions. The third aspect is identify critical success factors. This involves pinpointing the key drivers and capabilities required to achieve success in the global marketplace. This may include factors such as product innovation, brand reputation, distribution networks, supply chain efficiency, customer service excellence, and talent acquisition. Prioritizing critical success factors helps focus resources and efforts on areas that have the greatest impact on achieving strategic objectives. The fourth component is identify consumer needs and benefits desired. Understanding the consumer needs, preferences, and desired benefits is essential for developing products, services, and market strategies that resonate with target audiences. Conducting market research, customer surveys, and competitor analysis helps uncover insights into consumer preferences, pain points, and unmet needs. Tailoring offerings to address specific consumer needs and deliver value-added benefits enhances market competitiveness and customer satisfaction. The fifth component, assess buying processes, involves understanding how customers make purchasing decisions and the factors influencing their choices. This includes analyzing decision-making criteria, purchasing channels, influencers, and barriers to adoption. Mapping the customer journey and aligning sales and marketing strategies with the buying process improves customer engagement and conversion rates. Understand who and what your competition is, is the sixth component. Understanding the competitive landscape is critical for positioning the organization effectively and identifying opportunities for differentiation. Analyzing competitors' strengths, weaknesses, market share, pricing strategies, and product offerings helps identify gaps in areas for competitive advantage. Conducting competitive intelligence and benchmarking exercises informs strategic decisions and helps mitigate competitive threats. The seventh aspect is identify markets with best potential and having a few backups. Identifying markets with the best potential involves evaluating factors such as market attractiveness, growth prospects, competitive intensity, and regulatory risks. Prioritizing markets based on factors such as market size, growth potential, accessibility, and alignment with organizational capabilities and objectives. Developing backup plans and contingencies for alternative markets provides flexibility and resilience in the face of changing market conditions or unexpected challenges. Therefore, Developing the core global strategy requires a systematic approach to understanding market dynamics, consumer needs, competitive landscape, and critical success factors. By defining a clear business model, assessing global market characteristics, and identifying strategic priorities, organizations can position themselves for success in the global marketplace and capitalize on international opportunities effectively.
Implementing and managing a global entrepreneurial strategy involves choosing and executing a strategy that best aligns with the organization's goals, resources, and competitive environment. Here's an elaboration and discussion on the basic strategies of cost leadership, differentiation, and the hybrid approach. Cost leadership is a strategy focused on becoming the lowest cost producer in the industry while maintaining acceptable quality standards. In a global context, this strategy involves leveraging economies of scale, efficient production processes, and cost-effective sourcing to offer products or services at competitive prices. Implementation of the cost leadership strategy requires a relentless focus on cost reduction, operational efficiency, and continuous improvement across the value chain. This may involve centralized production facilities, global sourcing of materials and components, standardized products or services, and lean manufacturing practices. Cost leadership can be particularly effective in price sensitive markets or industries with high competition, where customers prioritize value for money over product differentiation. This leads us to differentiation, which is a strategy aimed at creating unique, distinctive and value added offerings that set the organization apart from competitors in the marketplace. In a global context, this strategy involves tailoring products, services and marketing efforts to meet the diverse needs and preferences of customers across different countries and cultures. Implementation of the differentiation strategy requires a deep understanding of customer needs, market trends, and competitive dynamics to identify opportunities for innovation and differentiation. This may involve product innovation, customization, branding, customer service excellence, and creating unique customer experiences. Differentiation can help the organization command premium prices, build customer loyalty and create barriers to entry, particularly in markets where customers value quality, innovation and exclusivity. This leads us to our last topic, hybrid approach, which combines elements of both cost leadership and differentiation strategies to achieve a competitive advantage that balances cost efficiency with product uniqueness. In a global context, this strategy involves offering a mix of standardized and customized products or services to meet the varying needs of customers in different markets. Implementation of the hybrid approach requires flexibility, agility, and the ability to adapt strategies and offerings based on market dynamics and customer preferences. This may involve developing core products or services that are standardized for cost efficiency while offering optional features, upgrades, or customization options to cater to diverse customer segments. The hybrid approach allows organizations to capture economies of scale while also addressing the unique requirements of different markets, thereby maximizing competitiveness and profitability. Implementing and managing a global entrepreneurial strategy involves selecting a strategy that best fits the organization's objectives, resources, and competitive environment. Whether pursuing cost leadership, differentiation, or a hybrid approach, successful execution requires a deep understanding of market dynamics, customer needs, and competitive pressures, as well as the agility to adapt and innovate in response to changing global trends and opportunities. Now, entering a new market is a strategic decision that requires careful consideration of various factors to ensure success. Let's discuss and elaborate on the strengths of the venture and the attractiveness of the target country. For instance, strengths of the venture, resources available, which include the availability of resources, including financial capital, human capital, technology, and infrastructure, which all play a crucial role in determining the venture's strength. Adequate resources enable the venture to invest in market entry strategies, product development, marketing initiatives, and operational capabilities. Assessing the venture's resources involves evaluating its financial stability, technological capabilities, research and development investments, and access to skilled talent. Market share is looking at the venture's existing market share, brand recognition, and customer loyalty in its home market can be indicative of its strength and competitiveness. 
A strong market position provides the venture with a solid foundation and credibility when entering new markets, facilitating customer acquisition and market penetration. Analyzing market share involves assessing the venture's performance relative to competitors, customer satisfaction levels, and brand reputation. Product fit is the alignment between the venture's products or services and the needs, preferences, and demands of the target market, which is critical for success. A strong product fit indicates that the venture's offerings resonate with the target audience and address unmet needs or pain points effectively. Conducting market research, customer surveys, and product testing helps assess product fit and identify opportunities for customization or adaptation. Contribution margin represents the difference between revenue and variable costs. It reflects the profitability and financial viability of the venture's offerings. A high contribution margin indicates that the venture can generate sufficient profits to cover fixed costs and generate positive returns on investment. Analyzing contribution margin helps evaluate the venture's pricing strategy, cost structure, and competitive position in the market. Which leads us to the country attractiveness. Now looking at market size and growth rate, the size and growth rate of the target market influence the potential revenue and growth opportunities available to the venture. Large and rapidly growing markets offer significant revenue potential and scalability for the venture's products or services. Assessing market size involves analyzing population demographics, consumer purchasing power, and market trends while evaluating growth rate, which involves forecasting future demand and market expansion opportunity. Now, the degree of comp competition is the level of competition in the target market that affects the venture's ability to capture market share, differentiate its offerings, and achieve profitability. High levels of competition may indicate market saturation, pricing pressures, and barriers to entry, while low levels of competition may present opportunities for market leadership and growth. Analyzing the competitive landscape involves identifying key competitors, their strengths and weaknesses, market positioning, and market share dynamics. The third aspect here, economic and political environment of the country, the economic and political stability of the target country impacts the venture's operational risks, regulatory compliance, and market access. Stable economic conditions, favorable government policies, and transparent legal frameworks create an enabling environment for business growth and investment. Assessing the economic and political environment involves evaluating factors such as GDP growth, inflation rates, currency stability, trade regulations, tax policies, and political stability. Bringing this all together, entering a new market requires a comprehensive assessment of the venture strengths and the attractiveness of the target country. By leveraging its resources effectively, capitalizing on market opportunities, and mitigating the risks associated with the country's economic and political environment, the venture can position itself for success and achieve sustainable growth in international markets. Developing a global program is a crucial aspect of international business strategy formation, encompassing the design and implementation of initiatives to pursue global opportunities effectively. Let's look a little bit deeper into these four aspects. The first being occurs during strategy formation. Developing a global program occurs concurrently with strategy formation as it involves translating the strategic vision and objectives into actionable plans and initiatives to be implemented across international markets. This stage typically follows the identification of target markets, strategic priorities, and core global strategies, providing a roadmap for executing the organization's global strategy effectively. The second component, product service standardization with local market adaptation, looks at, you know, while the global programs may involve standardized products or services to achieve economies of scale and consistency across markets, it's essential to adapt offerings to reflect local market conditions and preferences. This may include customizing product features, packaging, branding, pricing, and marketing messages to resonate with the cultural, linguistic, and regulatory requirements of specific regions. 
Balancing standardization with localization ensures that products or services meet the needs and expectations of local customers while leveraging the efficiency and consistency of global operations. The third aspect, localization in marketing globally specific to local markets. So localization in marketing involves tailoring marketing strategies, campaigns, and communication channels to effectively reach and engage target audiences in different countries and regions. This may include translating marketing materials into local languages, adapting advertising messages, imagery, and cultural references, and selecting appropriate media platforms based on local preferences. Leveraging global branding and messaging while adapting tactics and content to local market nuances enhances brand relevance, resonance, and effectiveness in diverse cultural contexts. The fourth component, concentration of production, customer service activities, and warehousing for cost savings. Concentrating production, customer service activities, and warehousing facilities in strategic locations enables cost savings, efficiency gains, and logistical advantages. This may involve establishing centralized production facilities to achieve economies of scale, streamline supply chain operations, and ensure consistent quality standards across markets. Concentrating customer service activities in regional or global service centers allows for efficient handling of customer inquiries, support requests, and issue resolution while also facilitating knowledge sharing and standardization of service processes. Centralizing warehousing and dis distribution facilities optimizes inventory management which reduces transportation costs and improves order fulfillment capabilities, which enhances overall supply chain efficiency and responsiveness to customer demands. Looking at this, developing a global program involves aligning product service offerings, marketing strategies and operational activities with the organization's global strategy while adapting to local market conditions and requirements. By standardizing core elements for efficiency and consistency while customizing tactics and execution to suit diverse market dynamics, organizations can maximize their global, comp their global competitiveness and capitalize on international opportunities effectively. Implementing and controlling the global effort involves executing the global strategy while ensuring alignment with local market dynamics and managing operations effectively across diverse regions. Let's look at these five components a little bit deeper. Local differences are important. Recognizing and addressing local differences is crucial for successful implementation and control of global efforts. This includes understanding cultural norms, consumer preferences, regulatory requirements, and market dynamics specific to each region or country. Tailoring strategies, products and services to meet local needs, and preferences enhances relevance, acceptance, and adoption in diverse markets. Next, we look at autonomy is beneficial. Providing local managers with a certain degree of autonomy enables them to adapt strategies and tactics to local context while remaining aligned with global objectives. Empowering local teams to make decisions and to take actions that are responsive to local market conditions fosters ownership, accountability, and agility. Autonomy allows for flexibility and responsiveness to changing customer needs, competitive pressures, and regulatory environments which improve overall business performance and adaptability. Local market research helps with adoption and business sustainability. Conducting thorough local market research is essential for understanding market dynamics, identifying opportunities and mitigating risks. Local market research provides insights into consumer behavior, competitive landscape, distribution channels, pricing dynamics and cultural nuances. This information helps tailor marketing strategies, product offerings, and distribution channels to effectively penetrate the market, drive adoption, and ensure long-term business sustainability. The fourth aspect, openness and understanding prevents not invented here syndrome. 
Adopting an open and collaborative mindset fosters knowledge sharing, cross-functional cooperation, and organizational learning across global teams. Preventing the not invented here syndrome, where local teams resist external ideas or solutions, requires fostering a culture of openness, respect, and appreciation for diverse perspectives. Encouraging knowledge exchange, best practice sharing, and mutual learning between headquarters and local subsidiaries enhances innovation, efficiency, and effectiveness in global operations. The fifth component, giving local managers discretionary budgets to respond to changing local conditions. Providing local managers with discretionary budgets enables them to respond swiftly and effectively to changing local market conditions and emerging opportunities. This flexibility allows local teams to invest in initiatives, promotions, or ad adaptations that are tailored to local needs and priorities without waiting for approval from headquarters. Empowering local managers with discretionary budgets fosters agility, innovation, and entrepreneurial spirit, driving business growth and competitiveness in dynamic markets. Implementing and controlling the global effort requires balancing global consistency with local adaptation, fostering autonomy and openness, leveraging local market insights, and empowering local managers to respond effectively to changing conditions. By embracing local differences, encouraging autonomy, conducting thorough market research, promoting openness, and providing flexibility, organizations can achieve successful global implementation and drive sustainable business growth across diverse markets. Sustainability has emerged as a significant global movement encompassing social, environmental, and economic dimensions. It involves meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Let's look at these components of sustainability focusing on social, environmental, and economic aspects. First being significant movement to social, environmental sustainability. There has been a notable shift towards social and environmental sustainability driven by increasing awareness of global changes such as climate change, resource depletion, social inequality, and environmental degradation. Stakeholders, including consumers, investors, employees, governments, and NGOs are placing greater emphasis on corporate responsibility and sustainability practices. Companies are increasingly expected to adopt sustainable practices throughout their operations, supply chains, and product services to mitigate negative impacts on society and the environment. The second aspect, global concerns because of global impact. Sustainability is a global concern because of its global impact. Environmental issues such as climate change, pollution, deforestation, and loss of biodiversity have transboundary effects that transcend national borders. Social issues such as labor rights, human rights, fair wages, and community development also have global implications, particularly in global supply chains where products are sourced and manufactured in multiple countries. Addressing sustainability challenge requires international cooperation, collaboration, and collective action to develop and implement solutions that benefit people and the planet globally. The third aspect, integrate sustainability into purpose, leading to business longevity. Integrating sustainability into the core purpose and values of a business is essential for long-term viability and success. Companies that prioritize sustainability demonstrate a commitment to ethical business practices, social responsibility, and environmental stewardship, which enhances their reputation, brand equity, and stakeholder trust. Embedding sustainability into the organizational culture, governance structures, and decision-making processes fosters innovation, resilience, and adaptability positioning the business for long-term competitiveness and longevity. The fourth component, avoid greenwashing. Now, greenwashing refers to the practice of misleadingly portraying a company, product, or service as environmentally friendly or sustainable 
when it does not meet credible sustainability standards or practices. Companies must avoid greenwashing by ensuring transparency, authenticity, and accountability in their sustainability claims and communications. Implementing genuine sustainability initiatives, setting measurable goals, disclosing environmental social performance metrics, and obtaining third-party certifications or verifications help build credibility and trust with stakeholders. The fifth aspect, sustainability connected to increased profitability. Contrary to the misconception that sustainability incurs additional costs and reduces profitability, there's growing evidence that suggests sustainable business practices can enhance financial performance and drive long-term value creation. Adopting sustainability measures such as energy efficiency, waste reduction, resource optimization, and sustainable sourcing can lead to cost savings operational efficiencies, and enhanced resource productivity. Additionally, consumers are increasingly choosing brands and products that align with their values, including sustainability, driving demand and market opportunities for sustainable businesses. Sustainability is a multifaceted concept that encompasses social, environmental, and economic decisions. Embracing sustainability not only addresses global challenges and responsibilities, but also presents opportunities for innovation, growth, and competitive advantage. By integrating sustainability into their purpose, avoiding greenwashing, and recognizing the interconnected, uh, interconnectedness of sustainability and profitability, businesses can contribute to a more sustainable and prosperous future for all. Creating an effective global organizational structure is critical for businesses operating in a globalized world. This structure must be agile enough to accommodate the complexities of global operations while also providing clear direction and coordination across different regions. Let's look at these components in a little bit more depth. First being adapting to globalization. As businesses expand internationally, their organizational structures must evolve to reflect the global nature of their operations. This involves moving away from traditional hierarchical structures towards more flexible and decentralized models that can effectively manage cross-border activities and diverse cultural contexts. The global organizational structure should enable seamless communication, collaboration, and decision-making across different regions and functional areas. The second component, facilitating worldwide strategies with local flexibility. A successful global organizational structure facilitates the development and implementation of worldwide strategies while allowing for flexibility and adaptation to local markets. This requires striking a balance between centralized control over global initiatives and autonomy for local teams to respond to specific market needs and opportunities. Central functions such as strategic planning, product development, and brand management may be coordinated globally, while operational decisions such as pricing, distribution, and marketing are tailored to local market conditions. The third component, organizing to think and plan globally, act locally. Now, what we're saying here is the think globally, act lo locally approach, similar to the slow food movement, is a guiding principle for designing a global organizational structure. This means centralizing strategic decision-making and planning processes to ensure alignment with global objectives and priorities. At the same time, it involves empowering local teams with the authority and resources to implement strategies and tactics that are responsive to local market dynamics and customer needs. This approach enables businesses to capitalize on economies of scale and global synergies while leveraging local insights and agility to drive competitiveness and growth in diverse markets. Now, a fourth component is functional versus geographical structures. Global organizations often adopt a hybrid organizational structure that combines functional and geographic dimensions. Functional structures group employees based on their specialized skills or expertise, such as marketing, finance, operations, or HR, to facilitate knowledge sharing and best practice exchange. Geographic structures organize teams and operations based on geographic regions or countries, 
allowing for local adaptation and responsiveness to regional differences. Hybrid structures may, may involve matrix organizations, where employees report to both functional and geographic managers or network structures where teams collaborate across borders and business units based on project needs. A fifth component to this is coordination and communication mechanisms. Establishing effective coordination and communication mechanisms is essential for ensuring alignment and collaboration within a global organizational structure. This may include regular meetings, cross-functional task forces, global forums, digital collaboration platforms, and performance management systems that track progress towards global goals and objectives. Clear roles, responsibilities, and reporting lines help clarify expectations and ensure accountability across different levels and functions within the organization. Designing a global organizational structure requires careful consideration of the balance between centralization and decentralization, standardization and customization, and global integration and local adaptation. By adopting a flexible and agile approach that fosters collaboration, innovation, and responsiveness, businesses can effectively navigate the complexities of global operations and drive sustainable growth and success in the global marketplace. Designing an organizational structure that effectively integrates international activities is essential for businesses operating in a globalized world. The structure must reflect the growing importance of international operations while fostering a seamless and cohesive global identity. Let's elaborate a little bit further on these three aspects. First being emphasizing international activities. Organizations that place little emphasis on international activities risk missing out on significant growth opportunities and may struggle to compete effectively in global markets. Recognizing the importance of international activities involves acknowledging the potential for revenue growth, market expansion, and diversification offered by global markets. This may require reorienting the organizational mindset towards a more global perspective and investing in resources, talent, and capabilities to support international initiatives. The second aspect, recognizing the importance of international activities. With the globalization of markets and the interconnectedness of economies, the importance of international activities continues to grow. Businesses must recognize the strategic imperative of expanding into international markets to access new customers, talent pools, supply chains, and innovation hubs. This recognition involves integrating international considerations into strategic planning, resource allocation, decision-making processes, at all levels of the organization. The third component, becoming a truly global organization. Transitioning from a domestic focused or regionally segmented structure to a truly global organization requires breaking down silos and barriers that divide domestic and international operations. A global organization operates seamlessly across borders with a unified corporate culture, shared values, and standardized processes and systems. This may involve restructuring the organization to eliminate domestic international distinctions, adopting a global mindset among employees, and fostering cross-cultural collaboration and communication. Now, a fourth component is integration and collaboration. A key aspect of the overall organizational structure is promoting integration and collaboration among different business units, functions, and geographic regions. This involves breaking down organizational silos and promoting cross-functional and cross-border collaboration to drive innovation, knowledge sharing, and best practice exchange. Integration efforts may include establishing global centers of excellence, cross-functional task forces, and virtual teams to tackle global challenges and capitalize on global opportunities. A fifth aspect is strategic alignment and agility. An effective organizational structure ensures strategic alignment between corporate objectives and international activities while maintaining agility to respond to dynamic market conditions. This requires clear communication of strategic priorities, cascading objectives, and targets throughout the organization 
and establishing mechanisms for monitoring and adjusting strategies in response to changing external and internal factors. Agility involves empowering employees with decision-making authority, fostering a culture of innovation and experimentation, and adapting quickly to emerging trends and opportunities in global markets. Developing an overall organizational structure that effectively integrates international activities involves recognizing the importance of global markets, becoming a truly global organization, promoting integration and collaboration, and ensuring strategic alignment and agility. By embracing a global mindset, breaking down silos and fostering a culture of collaboration and innovation, businesses can position themselves for sustained success in the global marketplace. The organizational structure refers to the framework that outlines the hierarchy, roles, responsibilities, and communication channels within an organization. Different types of organizational structures exist to suit various business models, industries, and strategic objectives. Let's look at these aspects a little bit further. First being global customer structure. In a global customer structure, the organization is organized around different customer segments or verticals, each with unique needs, preferences, and requirements. This structure enables the organization to focus on understanding and serving the distinct needs of various customer groups, such as consumers, governmental agencies, or industrial clients across different regions and markets. Each customer segment may have its dedicated teams or business units responsible for sales, marketing, product development, and customer service that is tailored to their specific needs and preferences. This structure facilitates customer centricity, market responsiveness, and customization of products or services to meet the diverse needs of global customer segments effectively. The second aspect, global product structure. In a global product structure, the organization is organized around different product lines or categories, with each product area having its dedicated teams responsible for product development, manufacturing, marketing, and sales. This structure is particularly suitable for organizations with a diverse portfolio of products or services catering to different markets or customer segments globally. Responsibility for each product area is centralized, allowing for standardized processes, quality control, and cost efficiency in product development and manufacturing. This structure enables the organization to focus on product innovation, differentiation, and optimization to meet market demands and maintain a competitive edge in various global markets. The third aspect, global mixed structure, combines elements of different organizational structures to meet the unique needs and challenges of the organization. This structure may involve using two or more structural models concurrently, such as combining of global customer and global product structures, or a mix of functional and divisional structures. The global mixed structure allows organizations to leverage the strengths of each structural model while maintaining their limitations, providing flexibility and adaptability to changing market conditions and organizational requirements. The fourth component global matrix structure is characterized by a dual reporting system where employees report to both functional managers, for example, marketing finance operations and project or product managers. This structure is common in large corporations with diverse business lines, geographic regions and product or sorry, project based work streams. In a global matrix structure, employees work on cross-functional or cross-border teams, collaborating on projects, initiatives, or product launches that span multiple functional areas and geographic regions. While the global matrix structure facilitates coordination, collaboration, and knowledge sharing across the organization, it can also lead to complexities, conflicts, and challenges in decision-making and resource allocation. So the choice of organizational structure depends on various factors such as the nature of the business, industry dynamics, strategic, strategic objectives, and organizational culture. 
whether adopting a global customer, global product, global mixed, or global matrix structure, organizations must align their structural model with their structural goals, operational needs, and market dynamics to drive sustainable growth and success in the global marketplace. Now, controlling a global venture involves implementing mechanisms to ensure that the organization's strategies, operations, and performance are aligned with its objectives and that risks are effectively managed. Let's look at this a little bit deeper. First being formalized versus cultural control. Formalized control refers to the use of explicit rules, procedures, policies, and performance metrics to monitor and regulate the activities of individuals and departments within the organization. In a global context, formalized control mechanisms may include standardized reporting systems, key performance indicators, also known as KPIs, budgetary controls, and quality management systems. Cultural control, on the other hand, relies on shared values, norms, beliefs, and traditions that guide behavior and decision-making within the organization. Cultural control is particularly important in global ventures where employees come from diverse cultural backgrounds and may have different interpretations of rules and policies. Effective global control strategies often combine formalized control mechanisms with cultural controls to ensure alignment with organizational values and foster a cohesive organizational culture across geographies. The second aspect, measurement and control techniques, involve defining performance metrics, collecting relevant data, analyzing performance against targets, and taking corrective actions as necessary. Key performance indicators are essential measurement tools used to assess various aspects of the organization's performance, such as financial performance, operational efficiency, customer satisfaction, and employee productivity. In a global venture, it's crucial to select KPIs that reflect the organization's global objectives and priorities while also considering local market dynamics and regulatory requirements. Performance dashboards, scorecards, and regular performance reviews facilitate monitoring and control by providing real-time visibility into key metrics and performance trends across different regions and business units. The third aspect, managing chaos, involves navigating the complexities, uncertainties, and disruptions inherent in global business environments. Global ventures face numerous challenges, including cultural differences, regulatory compliance, currency fluctuations, geopolitical risks, supply chain disruptions, and market volatility. Effective control strategies in global ventures anticipate and mitigate these risks through scenario planning, risk assessments, contingency planning, and crisis management protocols. Building resilience and flexibility into the organization's processes, systems, and workforce enables it to adapt quickly to changing circumstances and recover from setbacks effectively. Controlling a global venture requires a combination of formalized control mechanisms, cultural controls, measurement techniques, and adaptive strategies to manage chaos and uncertainty. By establishing clear performance metrics, fostering a cohesive organizational structure, and building resilience to navigate global challenges, organizations can ensure that their global ventures remain aligned with strategic objectives and achieve sustainable success in a dynamic and interconnected world. You made it to the last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I hope that you enjoyed this discussion and, and this course on international entrepreneurship. Again, if you did like this course, if you did like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I am working on content all the time on different topics. And by all means, if you have any ideas, be sure to put it in the comment section and let me know. Thank you very much again for joining me on this journey, and I hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Bye.